Hello, everybody. This is Leslie Powers here with Derek Bartolicelli and our wonderful guests, Brian Easterday and Brittany Ashby. And we are so happy to be back with Dissolving the Divide after a bit of a break. Right, Derek? Totally. Yeah, yeah. We had a little unexpected hiatus, but uh, yeah, it was time well worth spent. And Leslie was occupied with a couple conferences, you know, with this within the span of the summer solstice and the <laughs> autumn equinox. So that was really interesting. And Ryan Easterday was, was part of that, which had a great presentation that he, we both uh, like, whoa, this guy's, you know, like speaking our language. And that would be such a great way to, you know, bring back our series and, uh, and kind of, glaze over a little bit of some of these, you know, dialectics and polarizations and things of that nature. And uh, yeah, these are some familiar folks. I had a wonderful conversation with them, like to introduce Brian Easterday and Brittany Ashby. They're both authors as of 2023, at least within the same year. That's pretty phenomenal. And <clears throat> these fine folks have their... Uh, I want to say, geez, uh, like homestead and farm. Yes, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, geez, like you have a YouTube channel, a few of them, <clears throat> as well as Brian's Vedic astrology. And uh, yeah, I was uh, fortunate to be part of uh, Brittany's Anarchist Cookbook 2.0, which doesn't have to do with you know cooking bombs, but rather <laughs> bomb ass recipes of cuisine that is healthy for you yes <laughs> and brian recently put out the manifestation map mm -hmm. unlocking the magic of the cosmos which unfortunately i've been working eight days out of seven days a week and <laughs> I haven't had a chance to read it and i really wanted to and apparently it's you know really easy mm -hmm. not breezy but a conscious read that is well worth you know revisiting and integrating into one's life and persona psyche so without further ado brian really like and Inter yeah these folks yeah 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 introduce yourselves a little Do bit more of that yeah sure. what's your focus has been a lot um right now i'm currently working um in a nearby town but we've explored real estate I got licensed uh, in about two weeks in life insurance, so I'm going to be exploring stuff in that field. I love to write. You guys are familiar with that, so I'd like to make another book book sometime, but yeah, we're kind of downsizing the farm and, and recentering because we've, we've had a lot to focus on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I've I've been um, around, te you know, teaching natural on and different um animist mindset you know warrior mindset type of things for a variety of years had a, i've had a few different channels um out there that people will be familiar with um and then this year yeah i worked on writing a book um I'm currently working on the next one as well um like i said branching into things like you know real estate other knowledge because we're, we're really looking at ways to um continue expanding you know we have our we have our 10 acre farm here that we've been doing you know running you know different types of livestock um with like rotational grazing kind of uh, doing all our own processing, everything like that. Um, and now we're looking at uh, other ways to continue to expand out and grow our family, grow our knowledge as a way to kind of continue to establish ourselves in the world. So we have more ability to, to accomplish the bigger goals well and said. things that like we want to be able to do. Yeah. And your parents as well. So yes. yes. Yep. We yes. have three kiddos. Yeah. 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 So Brian, you did a recent uh, presentation for the Seed 5 conference, Metamorphosis, mm -hmm. called our, our Own Worst Enemy, How We Keep Ourselves Small. And I wanted to ask you to share a little bit about that and what brought that idea to the table. It really fits into our Dissolving the Divide uh, topic. Sure. Thanks. Um, so really, in, in thing on it, it's kind of been a theme that has, I've been, I've been working on for a few years but especially this last year it's been uh we've really had a lot of growth mindset things in, in relation Huge to a, a lot of a, a lot of major shifts so um and in many of those i realized that a lot of the limitations or the experiences um you know we have 
so many of them, they, they really come down to our mindset, All you know, them. that like, what, you know, what, whatever it may be that we may just have this certain thing that we're unwilling to budge on or whatever, whatever it is. And that shuts us off from a whole lot of other opportunities. And I was realizing that as I, each one of these little breakthroughs I had, I opened up more and more opportunities for myself. I ended up finding that instead of being stuck in like extreme polarities, I ended up finding myself in more and more balanced and more and more nuanced positions. Um, and this happened with a variety of things. Um, you know, whether it's um, views, for example, about um, finances and, and money or views about diet or religion or what, you know, whatever it may be. The, these were just a lot of different areas that I kind of kept reviewing and then finding myself coming to a more nuanced position on as I, you know, as I mature and, and go through my journey. And the other thing that really inspired me to do it was looking out as well you know so that first process of looking within and seeing where, well where have I kept myself small and then naturally you know if I'm doing it well I'm human we're all probably doing it right you know and then I I started looking out and just seeing you know in the community well even back you know when I first you know started getting into this type of information you know we we kind of go through that first angry stage right where it's point everything's the government's fault the you know, you know you're, you're just always pointing the finger outwards every you know and looking at all the problems and things but there's not a lot of like as much inward reflection going on during that period mm -hmm. and then i think as you go through your journey it becomes more and more of an inward reflection process and then yeah. you you can see confirmation in the world but but just seeing that you know in the community and stuff i do see a lot of for example um you know, just things like shit posting or or what I would just call like senseless bitching about things, right? Like just whining about problems and and not really actually, okay, well, what what are we doing about that? Where's the solution to it? Mm -hmm. Um and I it just made me see that okay, like, well, how are we smaller? For example, as a community, you know, like I think a big area, right? Like finances or money. This is you know, for oh, many yeah. years I had to hang up, but mm -hmm. you know how many of us may have like a really negative worldview of something like this, but because of that worldview, it keeps us from taking actions because mm -hmm. we don't want to participate in something, but you know, that lack of action could also keep us from being able to create the resources we need to create charities to do, to, really to do the type of work you actually want to mm -hmm. do. You know, like if you want to see a better world, well, like, it just it, it's a fact of nature that that takes resources like this is one of the things I talk about in my book is like the the five Purushathas in Vedic in Vedic philosophy and I, I have a channel or on my on my YouTube channel I have a video breaking those down but they're they're the five reasons um in Vedic philosophy for for existing mm. you know so you know you have to have a uh, comma that's the first one this is desire and then after that you have to have artha which are the resources you need to fulfill that desire so if you if you have a desire to eat, right, what do you have to have to make that happen? You have to have food, right? You, know, you have yeah. to have a resource. Yeah. If you want to build a house, you have to have materials. If you want to be able to help be other honest. people, you have to have an abundance of resources to, to be it. able to give to others. You know, right. so I'm, you know, it's it was in observing these things myself, but then also looking out into the community and saying, like, well, if we really do want to create this change, where are we limiting ourselves and keeping ourselves alone? Really, instead of the government being our biggest enemy, like how are we our own worst mm -hmm, enemy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and how can we stop fighting ourselves? Like if you if you look at the symbolism and the uh the, the title slide that I did, you know, I had an image of a guy like fighting himself, but his own shadow. Yeah. And it, it was a shadow and it appeared bigger than he was. But that shadow, you know. Is Just that shadow, shadow actually bigger than him? <clears throat> that, that's how our own shadow is to us. It always yeah. appears bigger to us. And the 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 things that we're fighting and struggling so hard on as individuals, and I think within the community, are things that could actually be resolved if we just shift our mindset. So that yeah. that was kind of what really inspired me to want to bring those type of things up. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I'm in full agreement. And I, I as time goes, I'm starting to reflect more and see that there's a reality we're living in where we are facing certain constrictions. Mm -hmm. And as much as we know they're wrong and we want to wish they're not there, it's not, um, we lose a lot of power for making, for thriving, you know, and making right change if we totally buy, you know, try to deny the reality we're really in. So it somehow we have to 
we have to blend and we, we have to see the good and the bad yeah we and, have and to and roll with both, whatever comes you know? up too like yeah. like just like just because something's there and it sucks doesn't mean you should oh it sucks you know you have to work with it right and we can, like choose to be victims or we can roll with whatever comes yeah. up yeah yeah so many things in the financial arena really hit oh, yeah. hit on that That's right yeah. Definitely. yeah yeah so so Derek, do you have any any comments or questions on the, on this so far? Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Brian and Brittany. And yeah, I got a whole lot of love for y'all, and uh, I've been resonating highly. And we're all friends on Facebook. There's a lot of mutual friends that we have in you know whatever community we want to call it in reference to, and that's great and all. And I've had my shortcomings with certain things and like feeling almost allergic to money because like oh it's part of the matrix system and all this stuff and blah blah blah, blah. but yeah brian like you said like we all need certain resources and and ways to obtain them and unfortunately you know we're stuck with not the barter and exchange like in yester ancient year <laughs> and all that but uh yeah what you mentioned before in your uh and you rang a, a, quite a few bells on your presentation. And just to highlight that real quick, because you know, I'm going to show a slide in the video when I do the edits <clears throat> so people get an idea. But before I get into that, just like the way I interpreted, you know, the limitations of certain things when people get caught up on like, oh, this person's about that and I'm polarized towards the other side or I'm indifferent or on the fence or blah, 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 is uh, like, like literally on the fence you're hanging on the fence let's you know like people are hung up on certain things and like i've been tinkering with the ideas about that and trying to put a video out about that so i definitely feel you and, and it it's a total imitation of someone's uh expansion and uh, networking uh, collaboration uh, work relationships what have you you know that's just life and so are people really going to be so standoffish about people because like, oh, there's that one thing about them and they focalize so much on that one negative thing. It's like, that's a polarization almost in it of itself, it seems. And it's unfortunate that that exactly. kind of cuts off that, you know, human connection, right? It's so, a self-dividing yes. behavior, which, I'll, you know, because then you make it to where like, you know, the, it, it's not the elite dividing us, it's, it's us, Ourself. right? You know, so whether, you know, someone, you know, diet's another big area, right? Oh, someone has a yeah. diet well if you have a different diet you're immoral or you know and it's just like okay <laughs> well you know and hey I, I was in that camp too for like yeah. many years and you know i grew out of that through um experience and through natural law and observation of yeah. natural law and that's what and that's what led me to coming back to a more a more balanced perspective in that area and you know i just think if it's um if it's you're holding a stance so much so that you then look at other people as if you can't then learn any from thing from them or you can't get any value from them because you disagree with them on a certain subject you you are then keeping yourself limited sure. you know and i i've been like guilty of yeah. this too before like a, an area yeah, like you know like, you guys are definitely familiar of uh some of my past work i've definitely been very critical of um christianity and oh, yeah. monotheism you know like it's what i don't i don't shy yeah. on like you wouldn't associate in, with christians for a into, very long time until just even recently right. um but you know i was <laughs> secret I was, I was on, you know no it's, it's true like i, I very much you know, I was raised, about it. no I, yeah i was very open about it like i you know it's just kind of one of those things um that you know in the the type of Christianity I was raised around was just very pushy and down your throat. And I'm like more of someone like, if you try to push something down my throat, I'm going to like, I'm going to shove your teeth down yours. Like, yeah. so I just kind of avoided uh -huh. the situations, but you know, I, I was coming across the, um, a video and there was a, a Jewish rabbi and it, um, he was speaking about the, the Jewish perspective as to why, th why they take such good carry care of their money, like culturally, you know, as a, as a culture, they're very, very good financially and you know explains this is why they make sure they have good careers like doctors lawyers things that are always going to be needed that are going to be paid well because they're they're valuable services and from the jewish perspective the way they say it's like if if god put you here for a purpose the creator put you here for a purpose it's your job to fulfill that purpose 
And how can you fulfill it if you're always just getting by and surviving? Like, how can you be abundant and give to others if you can't even give to yourself? Yeah. How can you truly take care of your family in a healthy mm-hmm. way and give them the best future possible um, if if you're not doing well? You know, and really what he was explaining was, you know, it's if we want to translate it to the, Ved- the Vedic perspective, it's Dharma. You know, you have a you have a Dharma, you have a purpose, you have a mission, you have an orlog here that you need to fulfill. And in order to do that, you have to have the resources, right? In order, yeah. you have to have Artha in order to, to be able to do that. And, you know, and, and like I said, I think the five Purushathas are so um, very useful for being able to understand the, the not only the entire purpose of life, but the different parts of it. And to not only be able to help people like understand like, get past the hangups on money and seeing it mm-hmm. as like an immoral thing, mm-hmm. but, but as well as like other things, like, you know, it, it applies to any resource, you know, yeah. if you, if you have a desire, you have to have a, re- like, e- even if you want, if you want to learn something, you have to have some resource to learn from if you know, right. so this applies to all situations and it, it's a really good area. I think people could study that. I think right. many um, Westerners may, bo- may not be familiar with that, those yeah. type of concepts that come from the Vedic system, but they're, they're sure. very, very useful for being able to, I think, yeah. look at um, natural law um, yeah. from, from an area that people may not have looked at it before. Yeah, we, I will get into that. I, I wanted to make a comment yeah. and um, ask a question too. Sure. Um, well, just to review the areas you highlighted in the presentation on the divisions, you talked about food, um, like vegan versus non-vegan, um, mm-hmm. money, you talked about religion, what were some of the others that you, uh, government was like, government. Big, you know, the idea that, you know, either government will fix everything or the idea that, you know, everything's government's fault and they have all the power, yeah. and, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it's both it's a polarity are, either yeah. way, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. either way, they're making government a more powerful entity than what it, what it really is. Right. Right. It's kind of making yourself yeah, small yeah. again. So, yeah. More of sexes, of course. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, right. Sexism between the genders. Um, yeah. Try to think of another, uh, can't remember them all off the top of my head. Yeah, but, but I mean, people get the idea. There's a there lot. There were six on that one slide, so in, and that yeah. was yeah. enough that covered like, you know, it was like 20, 30. Yeah, it, it's the same, you know, and that was really cool. Right. right. Yeah, and, it was mostly just to demonstrate that like, you know, if you find yourself like really stuck on a polarity somewhere, you're more than likely balance. you just ha- you need to look right. and bring some more nuance into it. And so, yeah, so you brought up the example, you know, of having this op- reactivity right to an opposing view and then creating an opposition or a pushback and mm-hmm. almost like a refusal in, to consider right. um the other to really listen you know because you're so staunch in your view that i'm right right and mm-hmm. and you talked also about that often we look outside at the problems but then eventually there's a need to look inside. And I think that when we have those strong reactions, it's a sign of something internal, you know, yes. whether it's a wound or a trauma uh, that is being tugged on, right? A button being pushed that's creating this quick reaction. And when we have that strong reactive reactivity, then it's like telling us, look inside, look inside, right? And, and I'm wondering, um, you know, what you would say is the steps or the way, the path to um, coming to a more holistic, un- you know, understanding so that we can dissolve that opposition and, you know, find this middle ground of peace. What, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on how? So I would, I would say I like to, you know, remind people to, of the phrase, uh, awareness reveals choice. Right. So the the best way to end up not end up ending up being very polarized or being a very ignorant person is to become an aware person. Mm-hmm. Right. So just th- that process of constantly educating ourselves and not stopping and thinking we know it all. Like we need to understand there's always more to learn and we are always capable of being wrong. And if we operate from that fundamental assumption, I think we're a much less likely to find ourselves stuck in one of those polarized places. But if we do work our, you know, because uh, life is not, a, you know, a single snap, right? It's it's a process over time. Mm-hmm. So I also think part of this is 
just going through your experience, like you're going to go through different phases and things like, for example, you know, I went from being a person that was, um, you know, I grew up eating meat and thing, you know, hunting, doing things like that. Uh, for a while, I became vegeta- uh, vegetarian and vegan for many years. And then I transitioned back into um, consuming <laughs> animal products again. You know, so there's this journey. And, and, and it, at any one point, you know, um, you could say, oh, yeah, this is going to be my diet forever. But th- then really, as you go through life, you know, things happen, things change. You know, like I ended up getting, um, I didn't have Lyme's disease when I first made the decision to be vegan. Then I ended up getting Lyme's disease. Mm-hmm. And, you know, re- it really affecting my health in a major way to where it, w- it would take it would take me out. And, and I just couldn't do it. It was affecting my body to a, a very detrimental point. And whenever I started raising my own animal products and um, consuming those again, all of those issues resolved. Wow. And I haven't had like a flare up uh, since then, I think, except for like oh, really? one time that it was like maybe like a I... two day thing and it wasn't nearly as severe yeah. as like before it would wipe me out for weeks. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I think it's just that going through your journey and then being willing to, you know, as you're, think of this, as you're on a road trip, right? occasionally you should stop and check your map if you know so if if we're if we're doing this what what we should do is like you know uh, review ourselves well where are we where are our beliefs do we think we're really polarized here am am i feeling really emotionally triggered every time i see a person that has this belief to the point that i'm like yeah fuck them because if that's the case then yeah i should probably you know um do that now there are obviously like certain groups of people that yeah fuck them for sure <laughs> but you know at least ask yourself first, is there a good reason that I'm polarized? Because there are some things that you took a very hard stance on, right? Like people that abuse children, like <laughs> I'm yeah. all of the opinion. We yeah, no a, middle. We have a 10 cent solution, you know, um, I'm very, you know, you know that yeah. hard stance and I don't fucking care, um, you know, but there's there many other things, you know, uh, diet or money. You know, I feel like we can come to a more balanced right. perspective. on, Right. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. Brittany, no, go ahead, Brittany. Well, I was just thinking, I think most of the time people pick like a polarized perspective without fully understanding the other side. Mm. For like, and for example, pedophilia, we are super against that. Now, I understand most of the time, not all the time, somebody had something sexually traumatic that happened to them. But here, here's the thing. We are not victims. And as a child, we have no control over what happens you know, and how we respond is kind of like default and wired into us. We just figure it out. But as we become an adult, we have steps that we can take. We have different choices that we can make. Um, So like, we're not victims to that. Anybody can grow, anybody can heal. But yeah, so I think that when it comes to finding balance and like picking a true choice, um, you have to understand the other side too. I think yeah. a lot of people just don't, they're locked in their perception instead of trying to understand. They're more listening to respond than listening to genuinely understand what's going yeah. on on the other side of the fence. Yeah, great point. I was actually going to say almost the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But, that um, idea yeah, of asking- The scale has uh, to have weights on both sides. Yeah, it's seeking mouth understanding, mouth. asking questions, understanding the individual- Mm-hmm. process right yeah and i think right. uh, a lot of people that have done like the really really hardcore deep shadow work is going to understand like the mind of a psychopath mm-hmm. to a oh, pretty yeah. good degree just even just to like introspect it and dissect uh, what that is all about even if you know it's just been them the victim of those people right so yeah, yeah and then and a, yeah you know, yeah and then finding um the inner need to transform oneself, right? Yeah. To a, yeah. So, so Brian, you mentioned that the Vedic astrology, which is an, an area of your expertise, and and Brittany, it looks like you too have mm-hmm. our, Yeah, I've that's been awesome. learning for about that's four great. years from her. Pretty, she's a pretty wow. good one. That's though. amazing. Yeah, you met. You mentioned that it has some correlations or ways of understanding natural law within it and oh, I'd, really like, I'd like to hear about that and more about the vedic tradition and uh said sidereal sure yeah so for me because yeah, you I, did a presentation about that 
<laughs> yes, Ty. Yeah, yeah, I've done, yeah, I've done a couple of presentations you want to just about that. that real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're they're out there. People can so. find them. I think um, <laughs> first seed conference, I did a presentation about Vedic astrology, and then I think I've done some of some other. I can't remember exactly, <laughs> but uh, they're out there. And then I have the whole channel. But for me, Vedic astrology is by far the the best system or of science that I have found to study natural law by far hands down I just I have found nothing else that compares to it and it's it's depth um and it's breadth I mean it's just it, Jyotish is a, a vast ocean like and you you could you can never cover the whole thing there's there's That's you can lot. study it for lifetimes and you're not going to get it all but the main you know kind of differences because most people listening will probably be familiar with the standard western astrology which for the most part, they will use tro uh, a tropical zodiac to calculate the chart. And this is the first big area of differences, the actual mathematical calculations used to create the chart in the first place. So the Vedic system uses sidereal calculations. Now, there are Western astrologers that do use sidereal calculations, but they're they're a minority. You Few, know, so very you know, far more, between the general difference, just to as a make a generalization, is that the Vedic system uses sidereal and the the Western uses tropical, just to generalize it. Now, the difference between these currently is 24 degrees. What is going on is in the Vedic system, we keep track of what is known as an ayanamsha. So this is a, a movement uh, of a calculation of fixed stars over a period of time. So every 72 years, they move another degree apart. So about around 2000 years ago, the, the zodiac would have all, they would have aligned. And then since then, every 72 years, they continue to move another degree degree apart. Now, this is happening constantly, but, you know, to get to a full degree, it takes about 72 years. So this is going to continue to happen. Now, this this cycle will um, takes about a full little over 26,000 years for this to complete. So from the time they align, they move apart, and then eventually they would come back together. That'd be about a 26,000 year cycle. So, you know, at about halfway, you know, about 11, 12,000 years from now, the cal you know, not that any of us would be alive, but the calculations will, you know, the tropical system will be saying, for example, hey, the sun's in Aries, and really you're going to be able to look at the exact opposite side of the sky and see that, oh, the sun's in Libra. Like that, that is mathematically, that is what is going to happen over time. And then from that point, it would slowly start getting closer together over the next, you know, other mm. half of that cycle. So, but it's it's a, a long period. Right now, they they're still within a decent range of each other you know but but again still moving further away so that's the calculation is the first major difference um why that's really important is because of what we have to remember what astrology is it's a it's a psychological science but it's it's based off of a physical science of astronomy and we the planets it, it's a physical impossibility for them to exist in two places at once Right. They can they can only be in one place at a time. And we have to make sure that calculation is correct. Like if you want to go um, take a road map uh, and drive um, across uh, Colorado. Right. Having a map of Wyoming isn't going to do you any any good. Right. You know, you need right. you need to have an, a map, an accurate map to because that's the foundation that you're starting everything off of. Right. If we bring it back to the trivium process. If you're using this this information and then making all your calculations, all your interpretations of that based off of this foundational information, but this foundational information is flawed. You're gonna get you results know, that are you know, and not insane. to push a lot of things, but <clears throat> I have definitely questioned as to why why a certain system is pushed much more popularly That's as compared right. to another. When I I know I know for a fact that that elites will actually use sidereal calculations billionaires use the vedic system like the british crown used to have vedic astrologers when they were in control of india that they that they consulted for that the line of astrologers that i've studied under is is through that descended line so that that's you know it's, interesting they they use specific calculations so that's the first area the other area is kind of the way that we go about looking at the chart 
and it's and yeah, the main thing totally is the the area of emphasis um in the western system they will tend to put more focus on the sun sign and you know the sun represents our our soul and our ego so it's an important part of us you can think of the sun as like the throne of your chart you know the seat of your soul mm. very important area to look at but everybody born in like that 30 day period is born in that same sign so it's mm -hmm. still it's kind of a broad period of time to to look at right you know um so this is why we put more focus on the moon and the lagna the moon is our mind and our emotions it's the way it's what we actually experience our karmas through right that's why two people can go through the same experience and they they have different trans right different translations different minds different karmas they have different moons mm -hmm. that changes every two and a half days signs every two and a half days so you're a narrower window of time and then the lagna the ascendant that changes every two hours you have 12 signs 24 hours in a day two hours for each sign and then, you know, in the Vedic system, we also have nikshatras, which I really love. So we have the 27 nikshatras. And then, you you know, so each sign has two and one quarter nikshatras in them. So that's why, you know, every person born in a sign, they can have, um, they can have uh, different personality traits. You know, one Aries may be very different from another Aries. It's, they're falling into different nikshatras. There's like three different expressions uh, of things. And, and then even then we're we're we split that up into to the padas and get a total you know so we get a very very narrow very specific. perspective and then we when we read the chart we read it from the lagna from the first house like lagna in sanskrit means to tighten down this is where lagna comes from cool. this, this is where the the energy in your chart becomes becomes fastened down where your personality gets secured this is the sign that was rising in the east at your moment of your birth and that understanding comes from the energy manifest from the east. The sun rises in the east. The moon rises in the east. So this is at how energy comes into manifestation. So whatever sign is there, that becomes your first house. So we put more focus on that and, and specifically the nikshatra of the lagna. So we get into a very narrow window of time. And then we put as you get into broader windows of time, moving into the moon and then into the sun, we there's uh the emphasis you know it kind of grows out so you okay. start with more very general focused, and less then you specific. and then you move out broader and broader and and each one of those is a pillar of your personality so you want to look at all of them. all of them not just the sun but Don't the lagna <laughs> is where you read the chart from in the vedic right. so if you ask someone in the vedic what is your sign you know i'll, I'll say i'm a Pis i'm a pisces lagna um okay. but in the western they'll give they'll they'll give you your sun sign not the right lagna. So, so then the, the nikshatras are narrowing down even smaller than a two hour window is like down to the yes. minute. Can you get down to the minute even like uh, down to about, about, about like four minute segments. So we have 27 mm. nikshatras. So I understand the, the uh, signs are solar constellations. They're the, they're the, the, the constellations that the sun passes through on its ecliptic as it's passed through the sky. Nikshatras are lunar constellations, and they're the the constellations that the the moon passes through on its ecliptic, where they cross together, where the ecliptics cross. These become the mathematical points that become the north and south node of the moon, Rahu and Ketu. Oh. That's how those are calculated. Is by the point where the the eclipse uh, eclipse um, uh, crosses. crosses. So. The nikshatras, we have 27 of those. Each of those are then subdivided into four padas mm. for a total of 108 padas. Um, for those familiar with occult knowledge, 108 is a very interesting number. Um, each of those padas is about a four minute period. Um, and, and this is just for our birth chart. In We also have higher divisional charts in Vedic astrology where actually about a 30 second difference will change like when we start looking at the D60 and stuff like that. So it, we can wow. get extremely accurate with it. Wow. So interesting. And, it's, and it's where do you, where do you see the natural law, you know, maybe defining that for, for, uh, for the audience and how you see, how you use, use the, the astrology. Sure. Absolutely. So um, I actually, have a couple free astrology courses so people want to start learning vedic astrology mm -hmm. um 
they can they can send me an email i the storm astrology gmail.com and i'll send them the free courses they can download oh, cool. um but my first two courses i focus solely on how vedic astrology is the study of natural law so i, I really get into depth i go through each cosmic law and explain it on a chart but a good example would be looking at the law of gender and mm-hmm. studying it so each of the signs is associated with a gender um, it is either a, a masculine or an external expression of the planet or an internal or feminine expression mm. of the planet, right? So that's going to determine um, how that, so an example being Aries, right? Uh, Mars is the ruler. It is the external or the masculine expression of Mars. So this is where you take the, the energy of Mars, that warrior, that fighter, and you, it's action oriented. Um, it's initiating things. It's it's forward going, you know, it, it's charging forward. You take that energy and and that's how they apply it. But then if you look at Scorpio, well, by Mars, but it's the feminine, it's the internal expression, how Scorpio person will deal with things is different. The, the Mars goes inward. So they be, they can become a little bit self-punishing. Mm-hmm. They can become, um, you know, hold on to things a little bit more. You know, the waters become a little bit murkier. They become more quiet, more hidden, you know, th- mm-hmm. those type of things. So it's, you can really, by studying the signs and the planets, learn a lot about law of gender and then you know if you're studying gender you're studying polarity you know if you're right. studying you know um if we want to see you know astrology is really the study of not only the principle of mentalism because what do we every physical thing in manifestation is is the mind of bhagavan the mind of the creator right yeah so what we're doing is looking at objects that are are long long-term large objects in physical reality so what are the, these are long-term large thought forms just like in your mind we have certain beliefs and certain ideas that hold more weight than others some things we carry our whole life some things we have for a couple of years right planets and, and larger bodies like these are are longer more solidified thought forms in the mind of the all and what you're doing is astrology is you're looking up and you're viewing the mind of bhagavan the, the mind mm-hmm. of the creator and you're physically studying it and then translating that down to the microcosm. So it's the study of the microcosm to the macrocosm, the relationship mm-hmm. between the two. It's the law of correspondence. correspondence. It's the law of mentalism. It's every single cosmic law can absolutely be seen mm-hmm. when you're studying a chart. And in fact, I would I would even say that you you cannot really be a great astrologer or you will at least be limiting yourself as an astrologer if you do not understand cosmic law and read a chart through that the lens of that understanding yeah, you're cool. you'll, you'll be missing so so much if you don't understand natural law when you mm-hmm. read a chart mm-hmm. and even the law of rhythm like everything yeah. moves Cycles. the moon i mean if you just watch the moon well as soon right. as you add the layer of astrology on there and you know what sign it's going through you can feel those ebbs and flows you can there are certain certain placements where the moon yeah. goes i won't get specific <laughs> where i just know where it's at because we're spicy I, time you know <laughs> where, yes. where right we are expressions on some and, level and that. certain signs depending on you know your own specific chart you'll feel more in alignment and more harmonious with some signs than others mm-hmm. um sometimes even neutral but everything moves and so we all have these cycles and that's another way you can observe natural law through astrology mm-hmm. that's a good example how about how about cause and effect where do you where do you see that how does oh that absolutely so a lot a lot of great ways uh to study that one so for example um from a historical perspective would be a that's a great way I, so i'm not like a history buff anyway i fucking love history i've always nerded out on it <laughs> and uh the other day i did a breakdown of uh king you mm. might you might like this Derek, uh, king louis the 14th chart right one of France's most uh, famous sovereigns, uh, very successful too. If you look at of history, you know he's the longest reigning sovereign of in in history. So I was like, well, that must you know. I just happened to be watching a documentary and they dropped his birth information. I was like, oh, oh there's there's a chart, you know. I can't write it down. I can't stop myself. If I hear birth information, I have to make a chart. So and then I started looking at it and I was like, wow, this is this is a really interesting chart, you know. Um, so you can go in there and you can you can study the chart from that perspective, but then you also have a figure like that. Um, another reason he's a really good case study is that he was a very documented king. Like from the time he woke up to the time he went to bed, people were watching him and observing him all the time. He was very much out in the open and, and in the public. 
So, um, and he was very uh, like schedule oriented. They said, if you were like 200 miles away, you could still look at your chart and know what the king was doing. <laughs> so, so there was just a lot of information that you historically, you can go back and be able to study that and see what happened. And so you have facts of what some of a historical yeah. event, <laughs> and then you can go look at the chart and see, oh, I see where that's that happening. Out, like, yeah. You know, same with the, uh, you know, famous mm -hmm. battles, you know, another chart I did was like, um, the birth chart of the United States. You know, mm -hmm. I rectified the birth chart of the United States yeah. and explained why I think most people have the birth time wrong by about 15 minutes and how mm -hmm. just that much, how much that little of a time makes a difference, like a major difference. Wow. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, uh, using astrology through history or um, in relationships yeah, uh, as a great, you know, whether it's our, our relationship or in parenting, we definitely notice, like Brittany was mentioning the transits of the moon we there are definitely some transits of the moon that we know which which kid we can expect things from you okay. know or you we know. Almost predict it pretty accurately ahead of time and then wow. we'll go, oh, yeah that's going on or, <laughs> so that's cool so when you catch that it's kind of like it's not like just to your advantage to it's not of any kind of malignant you know intention but it's no. something where you guys are on your toes like it's awareness so we're, we're aware of it. and all that that's great that's mm -hmm. cool. yeah yeah so like you know how to uh, respond properly to that or whatever. exactly, exactly. Like, yeah, one daughter the moon is uh yeah. she has a moon in a watery sign so we know when like moon transition to watery sign, cancer stuff, or pisces for like, sure she's always. for sure gonna be like feeling it uh -huh. and, being a little bit sad that day and so like when we see that happening and we're just like okay why, we'll is, she kinda, the chart. why is she being kind of whiny today and you know she's fighting with her sister and bickering you know and then we'll look at it we're like oh, okay that's going on so instead of like reacting at it we can kind of respond we can say okay well, you're feeling it we understand that but we're still going to work with this so it's you know for me astrology is i don't practice um what i call doom and gloom astrology or like fatalistic deterministic astrology um, astrology is a science for creating awareness and awareness reveals choice. Like yeah. every single position like, in a chart has its strengths and its weaknesses. Yes. And the, the point of astrology is to create the awareness. So you can choose to use that energy as a strength and not to your detriment. Yeah. And uh, as far as like cause and effect goes, like with these planetary transits, like mm -hmm. everything has its own energy. And like Brian was saying, it has its strengths and weaknesses. With those two kind of polarities of strength and weakness, you also have different expressions. You have like really fun, playful expressions, or each sign has different kinds of expressions. And, you know, we don't have to be victimized by any of it, but um, so it's not the planet's fault, you know, they're not the cause of things happening, but you just know, <laughs> based on certain energies and expressions coming up, once you know the signs and the planets and all that they bring of, in and of themselves, you can kind of determine what things are, are where. And so when we have these big transits, if we see certain expressions of energy coming up, we know that, okay, this is, this is harmonizing. It's in alignment with what's going on astrologically. It's just, right. it's just an observation of perfect cause and effect. Right. And it's a, it, you could think of it like That's observing good. the weather, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you predict where you look out and say, okay, so it's, it's either going to be sunny or it's going to be rainy. And then you make your plans based off of that. Cause it's a whole lot easier right. if you work with mother nature than try to fight against exactly. her. Exactly. Yes. And, that, and that's, that's what it is. You're reading the, the psychic right. weather in the mind of God and then, and aligning with that. So it may indicate that a particular it's energy a is taxing to your own personal like, it could. Yes, and, yeah. and or collectively, and you know, right? or collectively. it's important studying like your chart is you can you know you can see what's going on collectively, and that's great for you know observing the psychic weather whole. But as an individual, for your own individual practice, um, there are certain times that are really good for you to do like rituals or certain types of rituals, and other times that may not be as auspicious for you to do those. And ideal, and like music. you, you could actually. <clears throat> this is another reason why I'm so I'm so particular on basing uh the chart off the correct calculations because one of the things i do is i, I don't just read a chart i will i actually create personalized rituals for people mm -hmm. so these are something that has an energetic wow. effect on their subconscious and their unconscious mind they're they're right. powerful things like if you give someone the wrong mantra you can destroy their life like these wow. it, it is, it's, it's a science that's not you know uh, mantras are just right, not something right. that's just right. thrown out yeah. to everybody it's it's a science Right. And it's based off of someone's chart. And if you are, again, if your fundamental calculation 
or information is wrong. And then you're thinking, oh, I have a planet. And, you know, you might be thinking that you have, for example, say if you, your moon was in Scorpio in the Western chart, right? You would be thinking you have a debilitated moon, right? So this person could be going through their whole life thinking they have a debilitated moon. But if you look at Sidereal, <laughs> the moon would be in Libra and it's not debilitated. Got it. What's yeah. that fundamental right. assumption going to do for this yeah. person? Or, right. you know, if they think, oh, I have a debilitated moon, now I need a ritual to work with that. And then they base that ritual off of a, a position where that planet actually, you know, it wasn't, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I used to, in, in the Marine Corps as a marksman, if I want to aim at a target, I have to actually aim where the target is. You know, I, you know, if I, if I want to hit that target. So if I have a certain need that I need to achieve through ritual, I need to make sure I actually one know that is a need I actually have. And then two, I'm, I'm addressing that and, and going about it properly, because if you prescribe the wrong ritual or, you know, what we really understand, especially when you're using astrology, part of how I designed that ritual is based off of the elements and the offerings you make, the directions you face, all of that is based off of the sign and the ruling planet. Right. Of whatever planet I'm trying to design the ritual for. Well, if you, for example, are having a planet that it needs to work with fire, but you're using the wrong chart and you think it is needing to work with earth or something like or that, water. and you're enhancing that energy instead, you, you could actually be giving yourself something that you may already have too much of imbalance of. Right. You know, so if, for per prescriptive type uses, absolutely, the, like it, it's actually it makes a difference. Prescription science, it yeah. really does make a difference, and you yeah. can you right. can destroy your life doing the wrong. Ritual. Or yeah. even like, for example, yeah. for a long time, I was studying Western before I ever got into Vedic, and I'm a Scorpio ascendant in Western. Well, I was working forward as if I was a Scorpio ascendant. Well, you can see in my Vedic chart. Scorpio comes into my second house of values, but so like, I love a lot of dark music, creepy music, of course, the occult hidden stuff, but, but really like Libra is ruled by Venus. Like I can face those things. I still have a fiery Aries moon, but um, like the way that a Scorpio would lead their life and the prominent lessons that they're to receive are different than somebody who's ascendant planet is ruled by venus relationships have been so prominent for me and even though like my aries moon will face a challenge i would much rather keep the peace than between everybody and so having having your accurate place placements actually be accurate like brian was saying it you know you want to make sure you're calling or working with the proper energy because you could overdo it in in some area mm -hmm. and really throw your life um, for a loop or off your path, it could take you a much longer way than what is even necessary. So it's, yeah, yeah. yeah I went through a darkening phase for far longer than what was it necessary. Is, yeah. Yeah, like as and I've been on wow. an uphill trajectory ever since I've locked into my accurate disposition. Mm -hmm. yeah, Cause as, as a Scorpio Lugna, one of the things she was thinking is well, like, said. Oh, she had to deal with like a lot of shadow work and it trans kept me in relationship. kept her in a really unhealthy, toxic relationship. And um, much longer. when I actually gave her her first consultation, um, when we were, we were like friends, um, letting her know she was a Libra ascendant thing. And I, and then when, especially when I explained the Nakshatra things clicked with her and start, started resonating, you know, and it, it makes a big difference. Like this is, uh, like in the birth chart of the United States, right. You know, it changes between from like, uh, most people are thinking it's like a Sagittarius Lagna, but really it's a Scorpio. Well, what that makes the ruling planet of the entire chart change. Like the ruling planet of Sa Sagittarius that the, of the whole chart would be Jupiter. So whiz, sign of as, as a as Scorpio, the ruling planet is Mars. Warrior. Well, the United States, which planet do you think is the ruling planet for the United States? Are we the wise spiritual guru that's creating abundance and or peace in the country. world? Or are we a like country it. that is always at war? Yeah. It, that, that makes me sneaky you know, sideways. That exact same thing applies like in my wars. chart. You know, the difference between um in my Western chart, I would be in, in Aries Lagna. Um in the Vedic, I'm a Pisces. Well, right. you know, what am I, what do I do? Like all the time I mm. teach, you know, and I teach yeah. knowledge. like, like it's right. Jupiter is Swim much through, more, right. um, you know, and I definitely have like a strong Mars energy for sure. You know, I definitely was a, a Marine and things like that, but Jupiter is, is definitely a much more pro like if there's a passion I absolutely have in life, if I could hone it down to one thing, it's education. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's Jupiter. That's not Mars. Right. Right. Got it. Know?
Cool. Yeah, with what you're doing. Yeah. All right, so I got something real quick, Leslie, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, I'm giving you. A- I was looking this up because <clears throat> I'm I'm really not familiar at all with the Vedic stuff, and so you know, thinking about how to like you know just d- digest what you guys are gonna say, and you know, try to act like I have somewhat of an iota about it all. You don't have to be you. Yeah. Just be yourself. We're all learning here. I've pinched off of the tropical and all that for for a while. And a lot of us have, you know, uh, even like did uh, services or consultations with uh, Seth Exposa, I believe. Mm -hmm. One or both of you guys have been through that. I don't know how your experience was, but yeah, it was it was I'll pretty it was beyond mind blown. <laughs> yeah, for sure, no worries. But uh, yeah, that's off the Western and stuff, and um, even looking back and re-verifying certain things just based off of that system. It's like I got a ton of fire and wind in my chart, and then when I look at the uh, Vedic side of things, like I did the other day, like wow things are much more balanced like uh, there's you know even like a lot of earth up in there and all that stuff and so more and i can do like... that too because uh, but uh i don't know i resonate with a lot of stuff yeah. i try not to be so super attached to whatever so and what resonates i can run with <clears throat> uh, at a mm-hmm. soul level and i think part yeah. of the reason for that too is that um we all have the entire zodiac in our chart so shifting the chart whatever degree like turning it like a little bit like a rubik's cube right all the same elements are still there that's why you still relate because the the the, it's like if you're looking at a dish right like a food right the the same seasoning still in there but what amount of seasoning what's the order it's added in you know that makes a difference in the end dish right um the other thing to keep in mind that i really like to remind people of is if you're a person coming from studying a Western chart and then you go look at a Vedic chart, don't read a Vedic chart through a Western lens. Right. That's not no, enough. It's, it's an, no, it's important. And I'm not, I'm not saying that in a harsh way. I'm saying that because yeah. the, the, the way we operate our system is actually different. And the way you right. read the, is different. The way, the way our, our drishti, the way our aspects work um, are different. You know, we, we have um, in the, in the Western system, right? What's the standard thing? You look at, the planet, the sign, and the house, right? You have the, those things. Well, in the Vedic, we look at that, but we also look at the nakshatra. We also look at the pada. We look at the divisional charts. We look at yogas, which are planetary combinations. We look at dasha cycles, which mm-hmm. are planetary time periods. You know, there's the amount of tools that we have uh, access to is is just like so. There's so much more there. So if you if you just quickly glance at your Vedic chart and you don't understand how any of those things work and you're only looking at the, the base, uh, the base things, you can't actually make a proper judgment of the Vedic system because you're not really practicing the Vedic system. You're looking at a Vedic calculation, Mm -hmm. but you're not really understanding the, the full holistic view of how a a Jyotishi, how a Vedic astrologer practices the system. I totally Um, Here's another kind of example that can maybe help you guys if you go to look at either system. I'm an Aries moon, whether it's in the Western or the Vedic, Mm -hmm. but in Western, it's in the sixth house of like debts, um, losses, small animals, healing and stuff like that, which I can relate to in ways. Mm -hmm. In uh, the Vedic system, it's in the house of relationships and Mm -hmm. the marketplace and stuff like that. Um, Well, from the Western lens, I was basically, you just, any Aries is an Aries, any Leo is a Leo. Well, I thought I was just a hot-headed Aries, and I really didn't relate to that (laughs) now as I've grown. Totally true in my youth, in my past. (laughs) But there are two and a half nishakras, that's three different expressions that bridge through each and every sign. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not just a hot-headed Aries. Sure, I have my triggers like anybody else, but um, it's Ashwini is the Nishaktra. It's seen as the chariot. I can't sit still. Like most, mostly, uh, I'm sitting still now cause we're here, but I'm usually all yeah, over the place. The <laughs> um, it, that is also <laughs> symbolized by healers. And so that can still mm. come into relation, the area of relationships. The houses are the areas of your life. 
-hmm. And so most of my focus has been in the seventh more than the sixth. But when you're looking through um, the astrology lens, Western is more simple, whereas Vedic is a little bit more expansive. And so there's there's lots of different expressions. You'll see a lot of things that relate. You just might get get more out of it. So a lot of people will judge certain dispositions they have in Western and yeah. say, oh, I don't like that. Well, yeah. if you look at the Vedic expression of that, you might find that actually, like, maybe that's just one of those weakness areas, but maybe there's plenty of strengths that or, you didn't know about. Or they may not think they resonate with a sign, but they don't realize the Nikshak. I, I like that you brought up Aries. Aries is actually a, a great example uh -huh. of why it's important yeah. to study both the sign and the Nikshakra. So of in the sign of Aries, there it's the the first three nakshatras are Ashwini, Burini, and Kritika. Okay, each of these is very fascinating for their own reason. Um, Ash they they are all also known for having healing abilities, but different types. Ashwini especially is known for healing, having an ability to be good with plant medicines, natural things, um, sows, any type of thing like that. <clears throat> uh, Burini is a very motherly type of nakshatra it's actually symbolized by a female elephant so each of the nakshatras have their own deity that rules them their own um their and own sounds their own i mean ton the nakshatra alone has its huge vast amounts of information about it um and then kritika is like symbolized by a blade so you'll see lots of surgeons or chefs or people that they they can do healing but they use a knife to do it right they cut you open to heal oh, you cool you know but you could also find a serial killer right because yeah, right yeah. you know on the rest of the it planets. depends on how everything else is in the chart but you know or you'll see that um for example when there's um if someone gets beheaded in an accident or something like a car accident or something time a lot of times there's a, a like a mars with critica or so, Ooh, something crazy. like that going on in the chart so you know and but they all have the same energy of a warrior as well so why most people, if they just think of Aries as a warrior, right? And that's the only side of it they see. But when you step back and look at the Nakshatras, you see the feminine side of Aries. You see the healing and the and the other abilities that are there. You know, if you think about on a battlefield, um, there's warriors there, but there's all, you know, in the Marine Corps, we always have a corpsman with us. Somebody's got to patch you up when you get fucked right, up. Right, right, right. Right. There's all, there's a healer there too. Yeah. So that you know that's that is awesome the, the nuances the yeah. nuances you know, exactly. are really there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so so i have a question does does the system also sort of um incorporate how we might evolve through time through age? absolutely yep. yeah yeah we'll have a dasha okay. cycle so I, I like to say with astrology it's a tool that you can you can peer into the past and the future huh. um like i said i can go back and study historical events and i can look forward and make predictions like um a few months ago, I did a video on the eclipse that's going to be coming up here in, um, let's see, for like nine days or so on the 14th. Um, that eclipse is going to be very interesting, especially how it affects, for example, Joe Biden's chart. Huh. Like I went through, like I actually very much predict, like he, yeah. he, he's, he's getting some sort of like he, he might either die. He, he'll have some major health issue that deals with the blood or a lack of oxygen in his blood. And he'll probably have some sort of political scandal or legal issues coming about. And this is something we I've made this months ago. Yeah, and we've been seeing all of know, that start to that you develop, you know, um, with things that are going on with yeah. different, you know, scandals and, and things. So it, it's a very useful thing to be able to see and look at and say, okay, so I'm making this prediction and then and then see how it plays out. You know, so it's cause effect. It, it's very much, but um, as Brittany mentioned, our Dasha mm -hmm. cycles in the Vedic system, we have what what are known as uh, dasha cycles and there's a variety of different dasha systems and ways to calculate it um but what it is is a certain different planets rule like different lengths of time so you will have a planet ruling a certain number of years of your life and then it will tr go to another planet that planet will rule so as you move into these different dasha cycles what happens is that area of your life is getting activated so when you think about your birth chart right that is the that's the seed for your entire life, right? But it has to grow and it has to bloom and you go through different seasons and all of your karmas for your life are contained within that chart, wow. but they have not all been unlocked and bloomed yet. The Dasha cycles will show us the, the, the planetary time periods where those unlock themselves, where those karmas are going to come into fruition. Mm -hmm. And then the transit within that Dasha cycle will show us the exact time of activation. So That's you can cool. really go and see, okay, if a person has a yoga that is saying, for example, 
um, they're going to have a child or get married or come into some wealth or have an accident, whatever it may be, you can see that potential in the chart. You can use the Dasha cycle and then the transits to actually see when is that event going to come into fruition. So you can get very, there's people that, you know, astrologers that they focus just on predictions and stuff like that. And that's not as an exciting of an area for me to study. I like more of the self-development of the soul karmas type of thing, but we all have our niches that we like to focus sure. on. Sure. Well, in India, um, they use this to match couples. Yeah. Couples, yeah. yeah that's one thing it, I right. do is like marriage consultations and it it is, yeah. it absolutely it's works. Um, I cannot recommend enough. Um, I mean, not only astrology for personal death, but if, if you're in a relationship, Mandatory. understanding like your chart, understanding your spouse's chart, it brings, it just brings, I think, a lot of appreciation and understanding oh, yeah. for the other one. Because you see like, like so their more and their little things and you're like, oh, I yeah. see that happening. And it's just like, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like it helps us appreciate each other a lot more. Oh, yeah. You know, for sure. Have compassion. And, right? and you can yeah. see the sinistry points, like where yeah. we come together, you mm -hmm. know, and the whole strength and weaknesses thing. You know, sometimes certain transits stimulate things in our charts. You can see where people resonate or where that could even go sour and people can bump heads, mm -hmm. but um, it really brings in a beautiful depth and level of understanding that we use all the time. Every day. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love Every it. day. Yeah. 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 Seems very uh, practical. Thing, it is. Yeah. yeah. That's what I love about it. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking and just like commenting or just like making an observation that, uh, so yeah, my level of astrology on any front kind of sucks and and i'm not right proud right of now <laughs> right now that does, it doesn't stay that way though right no not at all there you um, go there's the evolution and progress towards better things and understandings of course and uh <laughs> what i've noticed in like i really appreciate both of you all for painting really a beautiful picture of you know what that the science is about and uh it just seems more colorful with and more allegories and it just seems more animated just by the way it's described as opposed to the tropical way of things and that's not to say like there's not good things about that or like enthusiasts and like mm -hmm. good verbal illustrators of that other science but uh yeah like you said <clears throat> and I, I you know come to learn about this as well like preparing for this interview is like Oh, wow. Yeah, there is, you know, uh, quite a few degrees of separation between these two things. And like, they're based off of different foundations and like, which is the best perspective of, you know, these, you know, solar uh, alignments or, you know, like orientations of, you know, how we're looking at the cosmos, you know, mm -hmm. from our point of view in this 3D, you know, blue planet that we're living on whatever yeah no i i, I definitely think it is a science that is worth um studying and that and that's i think something people need to remember to astrology is a it's a science it's not something that's just based off of um your feeling or i want to be this sign or i you know it it's a science that's based off of like the mathematical calculations, like of astronomy. And then, and then we move into interpretations from there. And um, like you mentioned with, uh, it's a very colorful tradition. That's, that's one, another thing I really love about Vedic astrology is especially in studying the nakshatras. Each of the nakshatras is said to be the home of one of the Vedic deities. Mm -hmm. So by studying that deity and the mythology about them, you'll learn things about that nakshatra. And, and vice versa. You'll learn about that deity by studying that nakshatra. Um, and you can you can very much see this play out very like very accurately. Like you'll see a story about a deity. Uh, so for example, if someone has J.S. the nakshatra in their chart, J.S. the nakshatra is ruled by Lord Indra, who's the, the thunder god. He's the king of the gods. And in a lot of the mythologies, Lord Indra is very, uh, he's very strategic. But what if he had an overall theme of what he does is he kind of gets a little bit insecure and then he he reaches out to other people and coordinates with them and he gets other people to help do his bidding for him. Mm 
Hmm. Well, JS the Nakshatra, that is something you can really, you, you can, can see very... the behavioral trait in JS the people. I mean, for sure. Really, it, it's Our kids very, have some of those dispositions. It's, it's very interesting to observe. Um, so you'll see the mythologies and you'll see these same mythologies played out in that person's chart. Um, and, you know, that's something, you know, that is a comparable with them. Um, not your standard like western like basic level western astrology like new agers practicing you're not really going to find mythology there but if you look at the people that practice more like traditional like hellenistic astrology a lot of the greek mythos of the sky and how it actually got to put there the, that mythology if you really understand it and you study it, it it has an actual astronomical meaning behind it that if you decode it there's a lot of wisdom there i just think a lot of that has been um unfortunately lost in the western right. system due to like the influx of um monotheistic belief systems like christianity that like made it to where you know you can't practice that type of right. thing um destruction of you know like the library of alexandria yeah. for example like um with hypatia she was a uh if anyone's ever seen the movie agora i definitely recommend checking it out but hypatia was a brilliant um philosopher and astrologer of her, of her time and um had brilliant discoveries and then when Christians murdered her, you know, those discoveries were lost for thousands of more years until we rediscovered them. Right. So it's that, like the that, gods are within us. Right. In so, a way. So, so much of, yeah. yeah, so much of that, I think, got just destroyed just because of what the history of Europe and what it went through that a lot, I think a lot of that tradition has been lost. Um, and that's, I think, a beautiful thing about the the Vedic system is it's an, it has an unbroken Connection. connection back to prehistory like you can go through the bhagavad gita and the mahabharata and their astronomical references there's over 300 astronomical references in the mahabharata that you can go back in time and, and date to see when those events actually happened wow, that's fascinating like and it, it's an accurate cool. enough calculation so i right. i love that it has that history to pull from and it's very empowering too yes. to sort of make those connections to those archetypes you know related Absolutely. to the gods Only and goddesses thing. and and i I was thinking like on one hand it could like you say it it can got it can sort of tell you about yourself that you have this particular archetype or god uh, goddess in you but I also it would also tell you what you're missing or weaker in right so is that yeah. prescriptive in a sense too to build so up I, other yeah I wouldn't have... necessarily even say it would be uh weaker because we all have everything in us right everything's contained within us Right. what areas are emphasized oh, that's a great you know where your planet it, yeah. is where your conjunctions are that's an area of your chart that's emphasized the rest of the charts there and it doesn't mean that it's weaker it's just not as emphasized so in this the reason why as a soul we we structure our chart the way we do because we do we choose our charts we choose the, the moment of incarnation that gives us a very specific karmic experiences because there's certain lessons that we want to experience and learn as a soul so it just means that in this lifetime some of those other lessons may not have been as prominent for us in this incarnation because in this incarnation that's just not the whole of our focus we have another area that we're putting more of our focus that's that's more of the way I okay I, that's a, a good clarification i like that i i wanted i'm curious about the use of ritual Right. And the idea of worship, which I've also heard mm -hmm. in this system. Back. So could you talk a bit about how, what, how you define those terms and how you utilize them? In sure. So I I personally would consider that I, I use um, worship in ritual. You know, part of uh, every Vedic uh, ritual is the worship or the veneration of deities. For example, like with fire, you always invoke Lord Agni. You know, so he a fire, the sacred fire. That's always a very important element to any Vedic ritual. Um, the Vedic astrological system actually didn't originally start as a psychological system. It started as a system for the timing and creation of a calendar of ritual. Mm -hmm. So even today in India, all of the holidays are all based off of when certain planets move into certain nikshatras. So it was originally a nakshatra based system. So it focused on the moon and the timing of the moon. And the reason they did this back in ancient Vedic culture was to know when to plant their crops, when to harvest their crops, when to give thanks to this deity, when to ask, you know, ask uh, Lord Agni for sun to grow that ask Lord Indra for rain to nourish, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the, these type of things. So uh, ritual is very, very central to the Vedic system. It is, it is the whole essence of where it grew and developed from 
Um, and then later on, as time went on, it became also more of a psychological system as well. Um, but for me, ritual is really uh, any any type of activity that you can do that allows you to consciously manifest more effectively. And this is something I, I wrote about in my book that, you know, it's... Um, you know, a ritual can be something as simple as washing your dishes or taking a shower, right? Um, or it could be something as complex that, you know, you get your whole wardrobe and your candles and your, you know, you know, you get your crystals and you, you know, simpler, you, you do, it can go as, as advanced as you want. But the essence behind it is that you're using it as a tool to align your conscious mind with your subconscious and your unconscious mind. So as you come into alignment, you manifest what you want. Mm -hmm. um, and that, like I said, that tool can be a, a variety of things for any, some people, it could be a very simple thing. Other people really need that, um, that strong psychosomatic effect. And they really need the dramatic music and the dark candles and the, you know, and that, you know, cause that's what does it for them. Right. You know, but other people may just like going out and, you know, going and working out or lighting a simple candle and then, oh, you know, yeah. with intention or, you know, a very simple thing. Even having like um, coffee in the morning, it gets you mm -hmm. set and ready for the day or tea or whatever. It yeah, can just be, like, yeah. set, you know, if you're taking a shower, set intention to it. Hey, I'm, I'm washing off any, um, un unclean <laughs> feelings or I'm washing, you know, the, it's a, you know, it's simple little things of just setting that intention behind it. And, and for me, worship is about, um, veneration. Right. You know, so you are then honing in maybe on a specific deity or a specific archetype and giving them veneration as a way of um, aligning with that and Versus, integrating it into oh, your life. Please grant me so, this thing. you know, you can use a specific ritual to venerate a specific deity to work with a type of energy. Right. So That's is the deity considered an actual external being or an energy or archetype? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's a deity on its own. It's an an allegory. It's a story, and it's you all at the same time. That's the beautiful thing right, about the Vedic right. system. Is it's um, even when you look at um, and this is one thing I, I've I've really come to appreciate about Hinduism is that it, it's it is the only religion I found that it, it's both a polytheistic and a monotheistic religion at the same time without it being a contradiction. Hmm. So? every everything is vishnu everything is bhagavan the source Bhag creator bhagavan means the all the attractive. all that is yeah the all attractive because it's the reason why it's the all attractive is because it is everything that is mm -hmm. so so that's the creator so you have one but then from there you have all the other different manifestations the different avatars right. of vishnu the different creators and so krishna and um Ar Arjuna, you know, Krishna being the deity and Arjuna, the warrior in the Bhagavad Gita, they're both manifestations of Vishnu. And this is what Krishna teaches Arjuna. Right. You know, so each one of us is Krishna. And you can think of it in this way. If you think of uh, Bhagavan as the sun and each of us as a sun ray, the sun ray is part of the sun, but it's not it is not the entire sun. Yes. It's, it's a manifestation of it in, in this same way. So we you know, we're all the same. It's all the principle of mentalism. But the ways, the complexity and the diversity through which um, the creator chooses to manifest is is uh, endless. That's and amazing. That, yeah, that, I love that's it. what I like about Hinduism is it, it recognizes both aspects of that. Mm -hmm. That feels real to me. It feels right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How would you um, respond to someone who's really triggered by the word worship? You know, it feels like we shouldn't worship anything outside you know, of us or a god or mm. you know things like that. Yeah. I would say maybe that's probably... And I wouldn't respond in this way, but from the outside, I would say that's a person that maybe hasn't worked through some um, some pain points or things and still has um, maybe not fully grasped the idea of of service. Um, mm. For example, you know, I think I think just because you work just because you worship something doesn't that does not make you less than it. Mm -hmm. mm. Right. If you look mm -hmm. at, um, you know, look at uh, in martial arts. Right. You have two opponents, right? And they um, they bow to each other. Mm -hmm. Does that mean they are less than each other? No, it means they're showing respect. Right. Um, I worship my wife. Does that mean I'm less than her? Right. No, it, you know, I venerate her because she's worth veneration. Oh, um, yeah. It's, you know, it's those type of things. There are things that are worth venerating. There are things that are worth yeah. uh, devoting yourself to and providing service to 
And to do that is not, not a thing. I, I think the phase of feeling uh, kind of rebellious and being like, oh, no gods and no masters and no none of I'm not going to be a service. It's all about the individual. I, I think that's maybe still a little bit of the knee-jerk reaction to some of the the societal influence that we've been born into, that there there have been violations of individual will. So a person reacts yeah. to that with a knee-jerk reaction of wanting to fight back to the extreme. But right. we might have just accidentally swung ourselves into one of those polarities that we we need to find more balance on. Like yeah. if you um, worship doesn't mean then go put somebody else way above you and right. downgrade yourself because that's how you get a cult. It doesn't mean a pedestal. That it you're doesn't mean a pedestal. Yeah. It means veneration. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I think that would be the way to try to, to find the balance in it. You know, you don't want to completely mm-hmm. give up your self-sovereignty and your free will venerating something else, but you don't want to be so like have your head so far up your own ass that you don't think anything else is worth venerating. Right. And that it's just not counter will, you know, it, without reasonable it, thought. Exactly. Yeah. And that it doesn't mean that you also like you would mindlessly obey. Yes. Yes. Right. You know, yeah. your free will is always still your free will. Right. You know? So, so the term like namaste, as I understand it, is like mm-hmm. the God in me, rep- you know, sees the God in you. Yeah, I see. I see the God in you. Me. It's it's right. a, a recognition of that. Yeah. We are all Bhagavan. Uh-huh. You know, so it's you know, you could even um one of the natural laws I teach that you know I've mentioned before is that you know everything is the same just in a different way. Mm-hmm. That that lesson is essentially like that the the same lesson contained in namaste it's that recognizing that we're all part of the same source but we just Mm -hmm. we manifest in different ways and that's like super exciting whatever degree Mm -hmm. yeah and like we can come to that with curiosity no you're perfect just Mm -hmm. being curious to understand like this complexity that exists in every person and in every manifestation you know Mm -hmm. it makes it more beautiful i mean imagine um Mm -hmm. Imagine a garden with only one type of plant. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't it be boring? Mm-hmm. You know, you need that yeah. variety to actually have a healthy ecosystem. It is our diversity and our strength that actually, if you study an ecosystem, it's the diversity in it. The more diversity it is, the healthier that ecosystem is. The more souls and the more perspectives and the more incarnations of of the creator that we have here experiencing and learning, the more we all learn together as the creator. Because that's what we're doing is learning yeah. ourselves. Yeah. That's yeah, very well said. Well, I think the we covered symbiotic a symbiotic relationship and all that. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. If if it, if we're so, following natural law, yes. Right. Exactly. And so in this reality field, unfortunately on the 3D level and beyond that and even below it, whatever the hell is going on for eons. Uh how can we get back t- to more of a I mean, like what are more or less the causal factors that you guys observe that are prohibiting us, you know, humans and and other animals, you know, this whole world, we're all trying to coexist with the lowest common denominator, the elements, the trillions of cells we have within our body. Mm -hmm. How are we trying to make that proper connection and not be so uh, divided or, you know, indifferent of or or whatever or not even cooperative you know, Separate I'll go first. You know. i'm sure you'll you'll have a good answer too i think uh, it's yeah. um, no, i already know yeah yes yeah, so. <laughs> i think uh the thing keeping people divided is is mostly division first from within oneself um like kind of like even having our own triggers when things come up externally if you've already addressed that stuff in here you know how to respond to certain divisions. But a lot of people, if you don't do the inner work, how can you address the outer work? You know, so I think it just starts with ourselves. If you can work with yourself, know yourself, actually look at these things that upset you, make you feel divided, make you feel triggered, and you resolve that, then it's easier to be with other strong feelings and divisions within the world and with within others. A lot of a lot of people cannot hold un unfavorable emotions or strong emotions or mm. anger or sadness and mm-hmm. most of that it's because they never did that themselves so mm-hmm. how can they be with those divisions and those uncomfortable things within others if you haven't learned within yourself first yeah. so well that's said. my thought in, in yeah. summation yeah, <laughs> yeah I, very well done i think that's good because it, it really comes down to that you know that uh, awareness reveals choice you know, I think if, if we want to 
evolve ourselves if we want to solve any problem we first have to you know you can't resolve a problem until you're first even aware that it's there right and then you and then from there you have to you have to understand it what was the causal factor how do you go change that causal factor so i i really think creating that awareness of cosmic law so we can then further understand ourselves and then in turn others much deeper because as yes. Brittany mentioned if you know, with dealing with a lot of objections people have, if you've already went through that process yourself, you went through all those objections yourself. So you already have the experience to know how to respond to that person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think it's just that process of continuing to, to always grow and not, not have the expectation that we're going to get it, you know, overnight. Yes. Like if you're, Takes practice. um, you know, looking, looking back, you know, I've, I've been on this journey, you know, depending on like what date you want to count, you know, 10, 15 years from some perspective, yeah. depending on, you know, a, a long time, you know, so I didn't get to this perspective overnight. <laughs> it was, a, it was a long journey. Yeah. So for those who, you know, maybe listening that, you know, they're newer to this, or, you know, maybe they started waking up during the whole pandemic, Ooh, you know, and, and, you know, the, these type of things that, you know, more people are now starting to question things and become aware than ever have before. And if you're early on that journey and you're, still in that angry phase and things that it's it's okay that's, that's part of the process but just understand like it, it's not a light switch you know it, yeah. it is a gradual it's a gradual process and understand that as as you move on and you go through time and you mature and you go deeper and deeper into your spiritual awakening your perspective is going to change and yes. grow based on when, because you gather more information right you're that foundational process of the trivium right you're either filtering out old old information that was correct. You're adding in more good information. And the, the more that the foundational knowledge that you have changes, the more your ability to interpret that information and then act upon it will change. And that and ultimately, that's what's going to change our results. Like it always has to first come down to the principle of mentalism. So it's it's always good to come down to some sort of education, awareness, Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, of information mm -hmm. and then being able to properly understand that and, and act on it. Yeah. It's like this blending, I think of what you both said, it's as we step into the knowledge, then we're building our capacity to hold the emotions and the contradictions yes. and the complexities and nuances, mm -hmm. right. So that we can really integrate the knowledge at a yes. deeper level without all the, um, resistances and objections like yeah. putting up. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. So I think that we're at a good point to start winding down yeah. and wondering <laughs> if there's some, anyone has some really uh, burning points or questions to share before we close up. Not necessarily. I like that we got to cover a lot. It's been fun. Yeah, really great conversation. And I love your perspectives, both of you and your oh, um, you. ability to articulate so clearly like this really complex um, topic, because it's helped me to understand much more than I ever have before, you know. Oh, um, well, that's yeah. so flattering. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah. Derek, do you have yeah, any I'm final words? The, uh, yeah, definitely with the uh, strolly points and all that. And uh yeah, going going back to just uh, what we touched upon in the beginning part of the segment of just uh, yeah, much respect to both the all, much love as far as you know being able to see in between the polarities of of a lot of what's going on you know from whatever levels people are on you know whatever you know like journey i like what you said with the whole light switch thing and for me it's you know it kind of ring the bell and i resonate with that and, and like so we can see that as an allegory of you know someone's awakening as you know someone it's not a regular light switch but maybe like like a dimmer a dimmer, a dimmer yeah a bit by mm -hmm. bit. like you know slowly yep. gradually you know getting more illuminated mm -hmm. in itself mm -hmm. and not part of it ignorati or whatever you know, <laughs> as far as like the the dimming of the light the yeah. deluminati full of ripping the light switch out the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah we're all putting yeah, in new so. light switches yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, well great. thank you guys so much for having us on yeah, i really yeah, yeah, totally yeah thank you guys yeah yeah. We, yeah we love it this is a great um first episode after a break so yeah. love it. Yeah, i'm glad to yeah. see you guys back on me too yeah, yeah we'll get it out yeah, soon. We're gonna throw a whole bunch of 
links and uh, references to, to oh. this discussion as usual. Yeah, I can make um, them. If you guys want for your viewers, for I can make a special like coupon code for the book and send it to you guys. I'll whip up a coupon code for you uh, just for yeah. the viewers. Great. For that special code wow. and give discount. Yeah. And just to put on That's the so video, cool. where do people find you to get a reading, for example? Uh, yeah. So people can uh, shoot me an email at eye of the storm astrology at gmail.com. Um, or if you go to any of my YouTube videos in the links down below, there'll be links to, to go to the uh, consultations if you want to go straight there. But if they want to just shoot me an email first, that works as well. So awesome. Yep. We'll have the links below the video and we'll have this up soon. <laughs> oh, we look yeah. forward to it. Thank yeah, you guys thank for having you. us. <laughs> all right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Great talking yeah. to y'all. Much love, y'all. Beans from the sunshine like a Leo, Aquarius, the opposite. That's the people. Capricorns on the rise straight through the ceiling. All my cancer crabs in touch with their feelings. Every season from the top where you elevate. And people keep the scales on me like I'm celebrating. Being hip to the stars, now that's a star shit. Back to back hits, I ain't never seen a harvest miss. Go to war like an Aries if you bring beef. Or like a Libra, we can negotiate peace. For my Sag archers, Gemini thinkers. Leo on the stage, Aquarius can change bringers. Gemini, that's the twins, yeah, cuz it's two. Sag hopping on flights, then schooling you. This for Scorpios killing them with my Taurus bulls. Virgos working they shift, Piscean orbit. Sun, 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 Speak up if you want some more soup. Mixing some consciousness and so reasoning. Me say your dad give the flavor and the seasoning. And if me want to fire lyrics, me get hotter and a better. All me do is adding liquor pepper.